So Trump spoke about the Green New Deal at CPAC. Uh, this was hilarious. <laughs> I'm going to play the clip for you. It's a little bit long, but it's well worth it. So take a look and then we'll discuss. The Green New Deal would completely abolish the American oil, natural gas, coal, and nuclear power industries, of which we're now the leader in the world. We're the biggest now in the world because of the that have happened over the last two years, by the way. And we're trying to speed up pipelines in Texas, which would have taken 15 years. We think we're almost very close to getting them approved. When that happens, we'll go uh, probably another 30 to 40 percent. We need pipeline approval. We're going to have it very quickly. It would have taken, it was going to be a 14 to 15 year process. We should have it done. We'll pick up 30 to 40 percent. Their plan would remove every gas-powered car from American roads. Oh, that's not so bad. <laughs> they want you to have one car instead of two. And it should be electric. Okay? So tell people, no more cars. No more cars. I think the auto industry is not going to do too well on this plan. What do you think, Meadows? How's this? Will the auto industry be good? I don't think so. It's not looking good. I think maybe, uh, maybe you're going to see some bad stock prices in that passes. It would end air travel. But you'll get on a train, don't worry about it. You just have to cross, cross up about 95% of the world. And it would force the destruction or renovation of virtually every existing structure in the United States. New York City would have to rip down buildings and rebuild them again. I don't think so. This is the craziest plan. And yet I see senators that are there for 20 years, white hair, See, I don't have white hair. I don't have white hair. Now, I see these white hairs, long-time senators, standing behind this young woman, and she's ranting and raving like a lunatic. And these senators, these senators, yes, I agree with this. Yes, I agree. The crazy female senator from the state of Ohio, the state of Hawaii, right? She's like, she's like a crazy person. What she said about men is so bad. What she said about men is so bad. But she's standing in the hallway. And she didn't know too much about the plan because she's, you know, she can't understand that plan. <laughs> Which probably makes her smart, actually. Now this is the senator from Hawaii. And they're saying to her, what do you think? Well, I don't know how people are going to get to Hawaii, but I'm in favor of the plan. I don't get it. I don't get it. So she's in favor of the plan. But you won't be able to get to Well, we can take both sides. We'll go back to both. This is the new Democrat platform for the... For, I, and I don't want to talk them out of it. I don't. I don't. I swear I don't. This is a killer. Get off the subject. I want them to embrace this plan. I want them to go and sell this plan. I just want to be the Republican that runs against them. <laughs> okay, I love that for so many reasons. First of all, the Green New Deal polls at over 80% support. So this whole, like tap dance he's doing oh they're so stupid and so out of touch with people i want to run against that okay go right ahead buddy by all means <laughs> like he's such a dumbass he doesn't even know that like he's so deep in that fox news bubble that he doesn't even know that he doesn't even know that his ideas aren't popular he doesn't even know that left ideas are popular by the way, this is where some people might say, okay, so a poll's high with the American people, but among Republicans, he's right. Uh, well, according to the most recent poll, the Green New Deal, polls at 64% support among Republicans. So, listen, I'll give, I'll give Trump credit for one thing, which is um, arrogance. And, and and bluster and belligerence and 
those are actually underrated political qualities. In fact, many Democrats would say the opposite, that those are negative qualities, to which I would respond, oh yeah? He got elected president. <laughs> so, you know, it was great. I saw a great tweet the other day. Competence is massively overrated in politics. Belligerence is massively underrated in politics. That's just true. That's just true. Persistence, always showing up. And he's relentlessly making his case. It's all like, oh, Green New Deal is bad. The Democrats are stupid. Um, and, you know, it, the trick is you have to have a Democrat up against him who knows how to fight back against this stuff. Because so many Democrats would buy into the framework of what Trump was saying there and would be like, oh, yeah, you know, a Green New Deal, uh, that was an idea, and I'm, I'm willing to work to fight climate change, and we got to be open to all ideas. All ideas have to be on the table in terms of how we fight climate change. But yeah, maybe the Green New Deal is uh, not the right way, and maybe we can compromise. And like that's how most of these Democratic candidates who are running for president would respond, and that would be a horrible response. The proper response is somebody who says, you do know it polls it over 80%, right? You do know over 64% of Republicans support it, right? You do know that if you were around, Mr. President, back when the original New Deal was proposed, you would be one of the naysayers, and you'd be one of the people saying, this is going to cost too much money, and we can't do it, and it's too bold, and it goes too far, and it's too transformative. Well, guess what? They did the New Deal, and it was overwhelmingly popular, and it helped get us out of the great... Depression. So you're wrong and you have no idea what you're talking about. And it's kind of embarrassing. You want to apologize? Please apologize for knowing absolutely nothing about this topic and making no sense. Please. That's how you need somebody to respond to it. And, you know, I think Bernie would more or less respond in a similar way. And I think um, the other candidates would kind of half buy into Trump's premise and try to talk their way around it and be like, well, we got all options on the table for climate change, but maybe the Green New Deal, maybe you're right about that. And they don't know how to handle somebody that you're not, you're engaging in jujitsu here. You know, they think they're playing checkers. You're engaging in jujitsu, bitch. You got to know how to fucking one-up them and, and, you know, put the move on and all that shit. I don't know anything about jujitsu, by the way. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Don't send that clip to Rogan. <laughs> um, so, all right. Let's go through some of the lies because there are a lot of lies here. Uh, they want to abolish uh, fossil fuels and the whole industry. Me. It's about transitioning off of it, which, by the way, whether or not you want to acknowledge it is absolutely necessary in the long run because, I don't know if you know this, we're kind of destroying the planet and we're hurling towards climate oblivion. <laughs> kind of an important point. Now, it's not like they always make it seem like, oh, we're going to, we're going to like immediately abolish it. Like next Wednesday, no more fossil fuels. No, you transition off it. It takes time. And when you transition off of it, guess what? You have all these massive new industries that are created, and these massive new industries are going to be, guess what? <gasps> Profitable! So there's going to be a new green and renewable energy revolution that leads to a booming economy, and it's just a matter of who's going to get the patents on these issues. Are we going to let China and all these other places get way out ahead of us, and they come up with the technologies, and then we're buying from them, or are we going to create it ourselves, and then we're the ones who are selling to the whole world? We have an, another opportunity here to become a manufacturing hub, which I think is absolutely necessary. So, you know, it, it's really it's really more of an opportunity, if you look at it uh, from that perspective, than something that's like a burden. I, you know, they're acting like Trump is the kind of guy who would scream about, oh my God, what's going to happen with the Morse code industry when the telephone comes out? Like, they just invented the telephone, but he's like, what about Morse code? Eh, they want to abolish... My political opponents want to abolish the Morse code industry. That's effectively the argument he's making. Okay, um, then he says there's no more cars. That's nonsense. Um, again, over a very long period of time, you transition off of fossil fuels and go towards cars that can actually run in a way where it's not contributing to the destruction of the environment. I think that's a wonderful thing. Uh, and then, again, another complete lie. They say it ends. It, they want to end air travel. I just, it's unbelievable how they're willing to just shamelessly lie. And then uh, he says, oh, New York City, they're going to have to tear down their buildings and rebuild it all. What? <laughs> Again, he just makes stuff up. They're not afraid to just make stuff up in, in, in service of their broader point. But in this case, the stuff he makes up is incredibly stupid, and his broader point is incredibly stupid. So, again, I think the most important issue here is this. Green New Deal polls at 80%, including 64% of Republicans who support it. That's 
overwhelmingly on our side, and we have to keep fighting for it, and we have to keep hammering that argument home, because people already agree with it. They understand we're at a transformative time in American history, and we need to take bold action. And then again, probably the single most important point is, don't think that there was an opposition to even just the New Deal. Back when the New Deal happened, there was massive opposition to FDR, massive opposition to the New Deal. People made the same kind of arguments that they make today against the Green New Deal. Oh my God, it's going to cost a lot of money. Yeah, and? <laughs> That's not a point. That's a non-point. So yeah, it's going to cost a lot of money. Uh, it's going to have a massive stimulative effect on the economy. We are going to, in the long run, rewire our economy, retool our economy, and there's going to be massive growth as a result of this. There's going to be massive job creation as a result of this. And it's absolutely necessary. In the same way that the New Deal was necessary to respond to the Great Depression and put America to work and fix our economy, fix our country, the Green New Deal is, is important for the same reason. It'll put a, a tremendous number of people to work. It'll make us a manufacturing hub again, and it'll fight back against climate change. So it's win, 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 win everywhere you look, but they got this dumb BS argument most of them are going to make about, oh my God, it's so expensive. People said the same bullshit about the New Deal when that happened. So, um, listen, you just need somebody who's going to know how to fight on these issues and not, you know, capitulate like so many of the kids. I mean, I'm imagining Cory Booker trying to respond to Trump here. Because listen, he's actually good at, campaigning. Trump is very good at campaigning. Trump is very good at just casually talking. Like, this kind of shoot-from-the-hip style of commentary is massively underrated in politics in terms of the, the strategist class. They should notice that the old school is gone. The 1990s, I'm gonna be on script and talk with my back straight and my thumb this way. Like, that's all done, gone, dead, irrelevant, stupid. Nobody wants that anymore. Look what happened to Martin O'Malley, who was that perfect example, that kind of a character. He got like negative 8% in the vote. Meanwhile, you got Bernie, who does really well, and he's just shooting from the hip too, except he's talking about things that make sense. Trump is not. But his style of campaigning is actually really, it works. It's really good. So you need somebody who's going to fight back against it. Imagine Cory Booker trying to respond to everything Trump just said there. <laughs> Trump would walk all over him. So, I mean, Bernie's the answer, and Everything he said there, when you look at it logically, uh, everything Trump said there is just hilariously dumb.